We have to be careful not to impose the values of a 21st century Ireland on the men and women of 1916 or the 21st century anywhere else. Crass political agendas associated with commemoration are not something that I would welcome. Given my CV, uh, what 1960 means is something that has evolved a lot over time, and I think you have to bear that in mind. And I think what it means, if I was to summar summarise very quickly, is it is the single most important date that determines the emergence of an independent Ireland in the 20th century. My thinking in 1916 has been shaped by very multiple influences. I pro suppose probably bits and pieces that I got at school, which I would say was mostly through Irish language and such, and English, you know, not, not really through history teaching per se. I, I, the only clear memory I have of anything from school, I remember uh, taking on a history teacher in Leaving Cert on what was so wonderful about Pierce, and this teacher was a very from a very strong Irish language family and her response was the mion even egg a hate a beautiful mind which didn't quite answer the question in my book anyway but so my thinking in 1916 has been has evolved I've taught 1916 a lot not as a main area for research but I would have tutored a, a probably hundreds of, uh, or thousands of students. I would have lectured in various places, many, many students in UCD and through various other things, American groups coming in on 1916 over the years. I would have read, I would have supervised on some areas close to that, master's theses, doctoral theses. I would, I haven't done major research on it myself as such, but I would have read a lot of this source material, a particularly Bureau of Military History, that kind of material and the secondary literature on it. And I have also been involved in a, in a, in a study with Margaret O'Callaghan in Queen's of the, the, the Golden Jubilee in 1966. And then more recently, in terms of my service on, on the Expert Advisor Group, I have done a lot of 1916-related stuff, both in terms of meetings and also talks. So my, my thinking in 1916 has really been shaped by all that experience. And in terms of how it's changed, I think one of the issues that would have come through very much in, you know, a, as somebody who would have been in, in UCD lecturing from the 70s through a, a period when you had, of course, the Northern Ireland uh, violence and a, a lot of uncertainty, discomfort about 1916 as a moment of violence and how do you integrate that into your historical narrative and what are the issues involved with that. Um, I think it's one that I wouldn't, I would have dealt with it a certain amount but it wasn't my core issue and uh, I'm, I'm now quite comfortable in that space uh, and I suppose the way I'd present it would be one, I think you have to contextualise it in terms of the Great War uh, which is a, and, and a particularly violent decade in global and particularly European history and it has to be seen as part of that. I think secondly you have to again contextualise it that the number of na modern nations out there who have some violent passage in their birth is it's the majority rather than minority, so Ireland is not in any way particularly exceptional, abnormal, and therefore abhorrent. And then I think in terms of violence, I mean, violence and armed camps in Ireland predate 1916. They're there by the early months of 1914 uh, with the Ulster Volunteers, and followed by the Irish Volunteers, and a so 1916 doesn't bring the gun into Ireland in the second decade. So I think there's a lot of these issues that I think you can tease out that I think are worth thinking about. And then the, my final comment on that is, well, yes, born in violence, but a democracy was established in the 1920s that has survived as a stable democracy ever since. And we should be thankful for that. People think historians love commemoration and I think historians have a 
ambivalent attitude towards commemoration. It can often be good to sell books. Uh, I haven't written anything on 1916, really, except that commemoration book. Uh, so it's not a, that's not a big issue for me. Uh, it, it, it does give us a lot of uh, space in media, public lectures, and so forth. But I think commemoration is not history, and that, that, I think, has to be your starting point. I think when you do a commemoration, you look at this past event, which, whatever it is, from the perspective of the contemporary society, and that is the way it will be uh, addressed. I think my issues about commemoration are that it should be historically accurate. It shouldn't become a historical. Um, I, that it should give a proper historical context to people who can then mark it, you know, be the more it's celebrated, do whatever they will in other ways. And I think uh, I think that's very, very important indeed. And I think we shouldn't impose, we have to be careful not to impose the values of a 21st century Ireland on the men and women of 1916 or the 21st century anywhere else. I think we have to be aware that they are people of their time and place and you need to respect uh, that particular approach. Um, so cross political agendas associated with commemoration are not something that I would welcome. Well, uh, bear in mind that I am a member of the Expert Advisor Group and we have been given, giving advice quietly to government for some time. Uh, so uh, there is a certain personal em engagement, involvement in the whole process. But that said, uh, I, I really f uh, feel very good about how 1916 has been commemorated. I think it's been extraordinary. Uh, we started planning for it back in about 2012 when you know the economy was in a very unsettled place and there wasn't much spare cash around. And there was a lot of nervousness, I think it's fair to say, about how, how 2016 commemoration might go, not just from the financial side. Uh, and I think one of the points we wanted to make is that there should be some permanent legacies and that money should be devoted to these permanent legacies. I think we've got some wonderful permanent legacies, such as the military archives, the files that have been digitised there, similar work done by other institutions, uh, the opening of the GPO Centre, Kilmainham Courthouse, so uh, the refurbishing of Pierce Cottage. I think those, I think those are genuine legacies for, for Ireland, and they're of, of historical meaning. So that side is very good. Secondly, the other point we made very firmly was that it was important to get it out into the community and to engage communities and I think the sheer range and diversity of activities that have taken place throughout Ireland and the involvement of bottom up rather than top down of local communities, local authorities, local groups has been quite phenomenal and, and, I, I, and I think this is wonderful and I really do think Easter weekend was quite remarkable uh, um, in terms of what was done in the major ceremonies in Dublin and then the next day the more informal. I, and I think that the degree of public engagement in the whole process was quite was 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 really quite remarkable. And then there are interesting bits that people talk to you about. I mean I was at a wedding um some months ago and I got collared by and by some woman who was a school teacher and she was talking about how wonderful it was that the army came into the school with the flag and explained it in the proclamation. And she was talking about it in terms of a school that is in a border town and she said that she was talking about uh, how important it was particularly in that community for the children to see their army coming into the school, engaging with them, and it, and that was the highlight for her. It was, it was just a very little interesting vignette, uh, and I think her observations were, were were superb. She had really captured something. My 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 first memory of. Uh, Eastern 1991 is being in the car. We were going somewhere as a family, I think down to Clare or Kerry, can't remember which, for, for, for a weekend. And the belated realisation that this was the 75th anniversary because there was nothing happening. There was some brief mention on the radio. And I still remember, I can still picture myself sitting there and the sense of shock at this coming through on the radio. So I think I think that's dealt with 1991, really, in many ways. Um, 
66, which I've studied, you know, my, my recollections of it are, are all blurred now with, with this, because this, I've done so much work on it. But, uh, but basically, 66 is, I, a, as, as, a, as a topic for study, I found very interesting. I think there was a much greater editorial line in 66 from the government, which was a let's celebrate the achievements of an independent Ireland. And there was a strong editorial line. It was, it was by the standards of, the day, much, of today, much less inclusive. Uh, there were serious efforts. And I think there was a lot done to bring in the Protestant communities in various ways. And they engaged in the Republic and they engaged very actively with it. I think that's one of the really good point, things that happened in 66 that needs to be noted. There's very little about World War I. And frankly, going back to look at this from, I suppose, at 2015, 2016, um, it's always a sense you've published something. Did we miss something out? You know, was I asleep on the watch? And you know, had, had we had failed to pick up much great war stuff. Uh, looking at sixty six, and and I did go back and look more closely, and I began to read about commemoration of the Great War, not just in Ireland but in Britain. And bluntly, the Great War was out of fashion. I, it's, it sounds a very frivolous term in the 1960s. The great legacies of that period are Joan Littlewood, Oh, What a Lovely War, which I think summarises the whole thing in many ways. It was seen as an unnecessary war. Um, it had been overtaken in other countries by World War II, and D-Day was very big, all those World War II things. So if Ireland in 1966 didn't really appropriately mark the Somme and the Great War, they were not seriously out of sync with the rest of the world. Uh, if you go to Australia, Gallipoli was almost dead as a, as, as a commemoration cause. So we missed that one seriously uh, at the time, but so did everybody else. And there wasn't a formal commemoration of the Psalm in Northern Ireland. There, was, there, was, there were events done in, you know, in Europe, not in Northern Ireland. So um, failing to acknowledge that. Um, the other groups, women got much less of a look in than they might have done. There, you know, there was Constance Markowitz and Constance Markowitz and Constance Markowitz and very little more than that, frankly. Uh, and I think, you know, you, you have to look at that. It, if, I think if it would come 10 years later, that would have been quite different. Uh, very little on the civilian casualties, though they're a very significant part of the story. So there are things like that that are missing, you know. What 66 did do, uh, was, because it was, it, was a, it, was a, it was an event where most of the participants were quite young, it, it, it did capture wonderful eyewitness accounts or first-hand accounts from survivors of people who would have personally known Sean McDermott, Pierce. Con, you know, Nora Connolly O'Brien and all of those, and I think the great legacy of that, and RT has been great in putting them together this year, are, are, are all those, uh, all those uh, tapes of those interviews, and that was the great legacy of it, I think. Well, I mean, a couple, there's a couple of things I think that we need to look at in this period. One thing that has struck me, and I've been reflecting on it uh, since the British vote on exiting the EU, and the fantasy images that come through in the Brexiteers about about great, that Britain would be great again and how wonderful it was. And I do think as a country, without, you know, blowing a trumpet, we have, by now, with all the difficulties that we face in contemporary society, we have quite a mature understanding of our past, of our identity, and I think we can engage with it in a very mature and reflective manner. And I, I think, you know, I think we should take a quiet bow on that. That's one point to note. The second point to note is that we are heading into a much you know, as we go through the the for the remaining years of this decade and into the early twenties, we're edging into a period where a, a commemorating events of a hundred years ago becomes much trickier. It, it all gets much more up close and personal, as I say to people. I mean, nineteen sixteen, you've got in a sense the set piece drama uh, in Dublin. Yes, there were civilian casualties and there were casualties among RIC and British troops and so on and, uh, let's, and DMP, let's acknowledge all of that. 
But once you get into the war of independence and a subsequent events, you're into local ambushes, you're into local terrorism, you're into local uh, intimidation events, you're into harassment, burnings, boycottings. Uh, uh, the event Northern Ireland, again, you have a whole lot of things like boycotting, expulsion of workers from shipyards, uh, from expulsion of Catholics from various towns. You've got some things uh, similar with the loyalist community in West Cork. So you're moving into an area where it's not just on the level of Ireland and Irish Republic versus Home Rule or Ireland versus Britain or these kind of semi-abstract concepts. You're into X's family and Y's family and Ireland is a small place and there's still, I'm happy to say, a strong sense of community and, and lo local, local identity in places. And this is going to be a more challenging experience for us all to confront. Um, so uh, it's a conversation that we have started uh, with various stakeholders here and in Northern Ireland to begin to at least, I don't think you can solve everything by just having meetings, but I think it's important to just begin to reflect on the implications of, the, of, 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 these, of these as experiences that we will undergo in the years to come.